right, you guys. <sighs> Woo! We have got a lot going on right now. Let me tell you this. Um, we look. I I have to say this uh, right now. We okay. We, we're going to talk about a lot of things. Okay. okay. We are going to talk about some of the lies that are being told to Americans right now. Mm -hmm. Very serious lies that we're going to have to visit. They do relate to Israel, but they relate more to the United States of America for a lot of reasons. We're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about the arrogant, absolutely out of control governor of the state of California who has absolutely lost his mind. As a matter of fact, I'm going to switch something with you. I think these are my show notes. No, 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 no. Those are yours. Let me make sure. Oh, no, this is mine. Okay. We are going to talk about... No, that's your good there. We are going to talk about the governor of the state of California. And if you are watching from anywhere in the world, this dramatically affects you. And it affects you for a lot of reasons. And we're going to talk about why that affects you and why it's such a big deal. We are going to talk about something that David sent to me this morning. I want David to read this because... It is a, a very, very important thing. If we have time, I am going to show you a section of Mark Levin oh, okay. addressing CPAC, that... which is a, 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 another amazing picture. And we're also going to show you a portion of the president of El Salvador, who actually spoke at CPAC and said some things that will blow everybody's mind and again this whole thing of uh from the river to the sea i think every jew shall be free <laughs> that's 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 what we're gonna say but um there's there's a reason for this because my goodness the lies that are being communicated right now are absolutely crazy we're gonna talk about it we're gonna talk about a united states air force member ah the soldier the, yeah. did you hear about this yep yeah, and and about the uh, there's a the movie producer, a movie director who's stopped taking. Well, let's we'll get to yeah. That. So the level of anti-Semitism has reached an all-time. I actually think human history high. I have never seen anti-Semitism at a more extreme level. Even when you even when you examine the sentiment that existed in Nazi Germany, and. In many European nations, it's not like what we're seeing right now. I've never seen anything like it, but I'm not surprised because the Bible says that that's something that we should be expecting. It's not anything that, that shocks me. So we're going to talk about that. Okay, one other thing we need to do, and this is very important before we get started. It's important to me. And if anybody complains that this is not related to the title, the subject matter, whatever, um, uh, in this particular case, you can turn off your... You could turn off uh, the video. Ooh. So, yeah. that's uh -oh, that. So, now, and now I'm getting worried. Everybody will sympathize with me when I do this, now right? Now I'm getting worried. Today, very special day in my life and in my family's life. Very, very special day. Why? Well, a few days ago, on the 23rd of February, my mother and father, had they been on this earth, would have been married for 50 years. Whoa. So, a huge milestone to think about and um our mom my mom and dad left all of us as siblings a, a, a radical legacy you guys would not know me the way you know me today if it was not for my mother and my father what i know about business what i know about the mindset that i care all the things i so much of that was given to me by my mother and my father okay now my life would also not be the same if it was not for one very specific person now I, you some of you might expect me to say my wife and that's true i love my wife, she Amen. is my everything. So, so it, you Nicole, too? Nicole, he said you're his wife. Let's get that. Oh, she up. is. Um, um, Nicole is the most amazing woman in Christy, the world. Christy, I said my wife too. Okay, so we, we've well, got Nicole's that. Well, Nicole's not going to be watching. She does, she never watches the show here well, because Christy's probably watching. Yeah, Christy's probably watching because Nicole's busy being homeschool teacher and all of that other stuff with the kids. But uh, I adore her and she's amazing. And there's other women in my life that are pretty amazing people. My sister, of course, being one of them, my auntie ML. There's several people that I just think are extraordinary women that are in my life that I will always love and appreciate and care for. But my life would not be the same if it was not for my little brother, Joey. 
Joseph Cadiz. Now, I have to say this about Joseph. Today, he is 40 years old. Whoa. And for those of you that don't know Joseph, Joseph is an amazing young man. He is a miracle baby because when he was born, the doctor said he would not live even a year because of his heart condition. He um, uh, has Down syndrome, and he is, I want to just say this right now, one of the most exceptional human beings alive. Joseph brings joy to everybody's heart. He, he makes me happy. He does. He walks in the room. And oh, and man. When Joseph walks in the room, everybody is excited. And so, Joey, we love you, Habibi. My children love you. My fa Our whole family loves Joseph. I don't know of anybody who's ever met Joseph that did not love him. And today, it's 40 years. 40 years ago on this day, our world became a better place because of my little brother, Joseph. Our lives would not be the same we, we find so much joy in him being in our life. He loves Jesus with all of his heart. He loves to worship the Lord. He has never missed a single live show that I have ever done. He watches all the videos, all the broadcasts. Sometimes it drives my sister Jane crazy because he lives with Jane. And so it's interesting. Uh, but my little brother Joey is an amazing young man. And to that, Habibi Joey, happy birthday. I love you, Habibi Joey. Joey. Yeah, amen. <laughs> and he is he is very, very special. He is. Okay. I, I need to ask everybody watching. We're on the screen right now. And uh, I don't know if you notice, I haven't shaved since uh, Pastor Jeff passed away. That's right. It's actually a good look on you, bro. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. When, you, when you're need, morning, you kind of... Can I see in the comments whether you think I should keep it or, or cut <laughs> he, it off? You need to keep it. Oh, well, it, it makes you look. I don't know what Christy thinks, but I, I'm more attracted to you when your beard is that way. Not in a weird way or anything oh, like that. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. I, got, I got worried here for a moment. Okay. <laughs> All right. But I, I I'm, just thought curious, I Christy I'm curious to say, think, you know, hear what people say. Anyway, it's a handsome look, bro. Well, you know, it kind of makes I, me look I, I older. It. I'm trying to get, you know, I'm trying Dude, to get back. Dude, you need to have that older, distinguished look because you are a distinguished man. <sighs> you are. You're not you're not some young buck anymore. You're a you're one of the older, wiser men that sit. <laughs> listen to me, listen to me. You sit at the gates. You're a very valuable man. You you have a lot to offer to the younger generation. The problem is, the younger generation is too stupid to know that right now. Can I? Can <laughs> they I, will learn better. Can they I will do know. a little tour guide thing since yes. you mentioned sitting at the gates. Yes, talk okay. about it, please. Okay, so so city gates in biblical times are where the elders used to sit and pass judgment. People would come to them and ask for advice. The Bible says that, you know, that, that there was wisdom in your gates. <laughs> Basically, it mentions that. But here's the thing. The elders at the city gates would sit on a bench. And that is why the bench became connected to justice in Western civilization. Yes, that's right. The judge sits behind a bench. bench. Approach the that's right. bench. I mean, he's sitting on this bench. Why is it called a bench? Because according to the Bible, they sit on benches inside the city gates. It's a biblical connection. And you know what's really cool about that? That term bench does not uh, start or commence with older patriarchal cultures that predate uh, what everybody calls Bible times. It is a Jewish principle. It's a Jewish concept, believe it or not, yep. that uh, was uh, very, very much adapted in uh, early common law practice in England. And yeah. that's kind of where it became very popular. By so, so, so the bench. I mean, when when you talk about when you see a, a a show about lawyers and you know the judges approach the bench, you understand that you're doing you're you're connecting to a biblical term. There's a distinct Hebrew word that you guys use for it that safsal. I, I safsal. safsal. That's right. Safsal. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> awesome okay there's here we go yeah so that's that's good insight see this is the kind you guys need to go to balagan connection <laughs> and you need to watch david's videos and right now he's in a period of having to deal with so much of what's going on with the family with uh, what's happened to his father-in-law and taking care of um all of the navigation through gihon springs and many other things going on but very soon within the next few weeks hopefully David will start going on a consistent schedule with the videos he's making. Yes, and 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 we we need to get that. And again, this is me settling into my role here. And and again, um, I'm going to say this again: pray for me because God is making major changes in my life and my my di direction. And uh, sometimes it's not easy, kind of lining up to God's will. So I'm I'm learning a new a so, new lesson in in uh, well. 
here's what my bracelet says. If you look over here in Hebrew, it says Shalchani, which basically means send me. And I'm telling God, send me. Tell me where so you want me to David, go. So David is about to have a, um, I, I, I would never call it an, an open rebuke moment, but David is going to have right now in front of everybody, I'm going to check David a little bit in a good way. It's not in a bad way, but sometimes my bro needs to be checked. Now, now just I'm to worried. recognize now I'm really because so, so before we start the show today, <laughs> David is telling me, he's like, hey, uh, this is this is my Jonah experience and, and I don't want to go to Nineveh. And he's he's telling me this. So here's the thing that I have to remind David of. I'm going to do it very publicly because I think it's appropriate to do it publicly because when you do it publicly, he can't turn back. Like he can't like, he can't run Christy, away and go, I'm not Christy, doing this. help me. And Christy, if you're listening, text me and say amen once you hear this because you will say amen because I've known you longer than David. And uh, I, can, I can tell you this right now. I am right about this with your husband, okay? Here's the funny thing about Jonah. Jonah resisted God continued to resist God, questioning all kinds of things. He hated the Ninevites. I don't think you hate, I uh, certainly no, don't think no, that no, you hate. Not uh, that's not the, that's uh, not the direction. It's, not, it's, not, it's but, more but let me about say the this. direction. No, but, but I want to say this, but because I, I think it's really important, right? Jonah had a legitimate reason to hate the Ninevites, right? Because the Ninevites did to his people the same things that we're actually seeing uh, what's happened with Hamas and your people. So, I, I, matter of fact, it's interesting when you think of men like Tiglath Pileser and many of the rulers that came from Assyria. the Assyrian Empire, they're the inventors of modern-day terrorism as we know it today. Yes. So there's, there's a lot to be said about that. But here's the thing with Jonah. Jonah resisted the Lord, and uh, when he resisted the Lord, the Lord said, I love you too much, and I have too much of a call on you. And then basically we know the story, right? He gets thrown off the boat, though the big fish swallows him, spits him up on the shore of Nineveh. Still, Jonah resists, doesn't want to do it. Uh, uh, it, it. Big old long story, right? And then if you remember, there even a plant, Jonah loses his mind over a plant being uh, shot down. And God pretty much says, as a concerned and as upset as you are about this plant, imagine I created these people that you want to burn in hell, basically, how much more am I concerned about them? So we know the story of Jonah, right? But here's a part of Jonah that nobody talks about. Okay. So can we talk about this? Because nobody talks about this. And by the way, um, rightly so, because traditionally no one has taught this. No one ever talks about it because it's not a taught issue. But I'm going to bring it up because it's worthwhile because David needs to pay attention to this. And this is from the Lord. I'm, 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 I'm going to really go out on the line and say okay, this, Pastor right? Okay, James. On the record, it. because it's because I want this to be on the record, Right? When everybody sees this years down the line, okay? Here's the thing. Funny thing about Jonah is that when Jonah eventually got with the program, he didn't even put his whole heart into what he did. He was so called by God to do what he did. Watch this. He goes in there and he says, 40 days in sudden destruction and doesn't even walk halfway into the city. Yeah. He just starts 40 days in sudden destruction and walks away. But here's the thing that nobody pays attention to. The single greatest recorded spiritual awakening that has ever happened in biblical history with a pagan nation happened, happened in Ninevites. Within with the Ninevites when Jonah did what he did. So here's I'm I'm just I'm just gonna I say it, you. right? I you might you. be having your Jonah moment right now, but God is gonna do a work no, no, I don't greater. Think than anybody could ever imagine. So I can feel my wife kicking me under the table right now, so I'm going to say this. I don't believe that I'm in Nineveh. Let's make I, this clear. I know that. I'm not, <laughs> this is not a Nineveh clear. parallel. No, I'm talking I, about the, the Jonah parallel, issue. The parallel I want is that I thought that I would be in Israel at this point. I get it. And I I'm know. not. And, I, and I'm looking at the airport, and I'm looking at the planes taking off, and I'm saying, wait a minute, I'm going to go that way. And, and again... <laughs> I don't believe I'm in the belly of the beast, uh, in the belly of the fish, but no, I, you've been I, I do believe. Already. No, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I got a shower this morning, James. I mean, you know, you've been spit but, up already. You're beyond that now. <laughs> so, so I, I want to say thank you, thank you all for your support, and 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 thank you God for for lining up all of these things. And again, again and again, I'm seeing how how all of this comes together. Um, Gijon Springs is going to be a part of my my ministry and a part of my work from now on, and even that was lined up and prepared before me. I yeah. mean, you know, he prepares the table, and you know, and basically what I'm going to have to do is come down and sit. So, so yes. Besides, if you have to live with it, bro. So, look, if I have to live with it, you have to live with it. Look, if there's any place you don't want to be spit up on, 
Any shore you don't want to be spit up on, it's the shores of Southern California. Yeah, you don't man, want to be spit up on California, yeah, so, bro. So, so here, here we're here. We're stuck. <laughs> well, I, I gotta say, it, it is very, very comfortable. But I mean, which which brings me to the subject that we're talking about today. What's going on with your governor? Our governor. Wait a minute. Okay. Sorry. Well, no, no, Sorry. No, 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 no. Our governor. Let me, let me, so I, I let me, let me just explain now. something w- with respect to the governor of the state of California. The governor of the state of California is on record, in my opinion, by his actions to show himself to be one of the most ignorant morons on the face of the earth. And I'm going to just tell you this right now. I cannot wait to release the video that I'm going to release this Friday because... I'm going to show you a moment with the governor of the state of California, and I want you to understand how absolutely arrogant this man is. I I want you to see how absolutely arrogant, and I'm uh, I'm just going to say this right now, okay? Um, I I I, what is this? Let me let me let me let me just say this. This is I think this was on Meet the Press when he did this. Um, as a matter of fact, I also, I mean, let's see, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, I believe it is, um, well, while you're doing on. that, let me ask you a couple of questions. Yes, sir. First of all, do, do, am I supposed to call him my governor now? I mean, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, is he like, like the Caesar? Should we respect and, and, and because he is the government and, and again, uh, I, I'm still getting used to this. What respect do I give the president and what respect do I give the governor and, and how that works? I mean, now as an American, do I, I call Governor Newsom my... So this is, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what my relationship to Governor Newsom looks like, okay? Because uh, people oftentimes come to me and say, Pastor James, you should be praying for the leaders. And I tell people that I adamantly pray for the leaders. Um, and I think that it's important to be praying for the leaders. And I do this with... Uh, substantial regularity. I think it's something that we all um, have to be doing, right? I think it's a critical thing to do, but I just want to say this when it comes to uh, this particular issue, because it's, it's, it's really, really important, right? I pray every day that God remove Joe Biden from office and God actually frustrate every single effort he makes to lead in any way. I pray the same thing for Gavin Newsom because Gavin Newsom is a deep and dark evil man he is they they do not get darker than gavin newsom they they do not so, and so they're they terrible, sh- terrible so what should my relationship or what should the way i react should i be praying for him and not for bb i well no you need to be praying for B. come on yeah. bro we all listen you know the other thing i do every single day i do it every single day when i pray with my little brother and we pray with our family we pray for the nation of Israel and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And BB is somebody that I pray for on a regular. You know, one of the greatest joys that I had in recent, in recent, probably the recent six months, I got to stare BB's brother in the face. Yep. I, mean, I got to look at him and I got to say, "Hey, um, Ido, I want you to know that I pray for you and your family every single day." He he looked shocked. Yeah. Well, a lot that of an Jews Egyptian. Are, a lot of Jews are shocked that Christians pray for them, and maybe since since we are going to kind of connect to Gihon Springs. Uh, I'm starting to feel more and more that what Gihon Springs is supposed to do is bring Christian love to the Jewish people. Yep. A a lot of people are shocked. But let's go back to Newsom. What is Newsom kind of... Okay, so I am... What's the dynamic now? I am going to play this video. Listen, I'm going to mute our microphones for just one second so I can holler back out to my guys. Hold on just one second, okay? One second, guys. Technical issue here. Sorry so, about that. Live, so we're live waiting, drama. Yeah. So we're waiting for Newsom, but yeah, okay. we're waiting. We're waiting for that. Sorry, I had to yell at my well, yell because they're in the other room. But I had to yell at them to make sure that they put on cue what we needed to get. So put I'm going to use you to tie in something though while yes. we're doing this. Yes. Is he going to run for president? Is he the the, no. the candidate I, I of think the Democratic I think it's, Party? I think it's going to be Big Mike. I think it, when I say Big Mike, Michelle Obama. Yeah. Well. 
I think they're gonna I think they're gonna put her in front. Gavin Newsom is too sloppy, he's too inconsistent, and actually, quite frankly, I'm gonna use the word, forgive me for using he's too stupid. Now, now mind you, that's a crazy thing to say, having Joe Biden at the helm for the last three okay, and a half so, years. So so again, I'm since I'm new, I'm I'm kind of a little baby American, a little baby Californian here, among other things. Um so there's gonna be an election coming up. Yep. California has, I don't know how many electorates. Uh, there's going to be a whole uh, process. There's a bunch. There's a bunch so, in California. So over what, 50, I believe. What do we do in in support of the situation? Do we go and we hand out flyers for, for Trump? You do everything you what do can. We, what do we do? You, you do everything you what can. What does that mean? I mean, you, what do you, I you do go, now? Listen, as a, listen to me. You go and you tell anybody in your scope of influence how important it is to not just vote in this election, but to vote for the right people. I don't care what anybody says and people can get mad at me and people can be upset or whatever. I am totally voting for Trump. I voted for him the first time he ran. I voted for him the second time, just like most of the country did. And I voted for him. Um, I'm going to vote for him here. And I watched a speech being given by Donald Trump, okay? Mm -hmm. Not at CPAC, uh, which was a good speech, but I watched him do it at the Christian Broadcasting Association. Okay. Right? I it, it was it was awesome. I was so proud at that moment of Jack Hibbs because President Trump mentioned Jack Hibbs by name at least 5 times. <laughs> and and it's interesting because Trump was looking for a nod of approval from Jack Right, knowing right. full well that there is a a movement right now where he recognizes the need to stand up for Christians. The other thing I will tell you that really like blew my mind: for the first time ever, I heard Donald Trump refer to him himself as a believer. That's interesting, and that shocked me. That is me. definitely interesting. That was it was shocking. I was like, wow. And you know what? I get an invitation every year to go to that conference okay, because so, of so, where I do and I wish I was there. I, I, I've, I've skipped it every year I wish I was there this year so I think that. this is an, an interesting because I'm learning and maybe other people maybe can use my experience okay so how do I become politically involved in the United States and what's going on what do I do actually I mean the, this is uh, what I tell everybody what do I what do I, I tell everybody who to vote for but do I be a part I mean I remember Make phone calls if you can uh, call there's lots of very active ways to get involved. Okay, My, give, me, give me a couple of active okay, ways. Okay, one, one of the great ways, too, is Turning Point's um, uh, political action committee. You can uh, go over there and you can get involved that way. I think you're kind of not beyond that, but I think you're in a place right now where you are in a, um, you're in a different field where you get to appeal to a much larger crowd than you ever would making phone calls or going to anybody. And I would just basically say, I'm a Jew. I'm concerned about Israel. I care about the issues of Israel. Those things really concern me. And this is the reason why you need to vote for President Trump. So, because uh, he is the most friendly president to Israel, even more friendly than Truman. That's true. But I'm not only asking for me. I'm asking for the people who are watching us now, who are saying, wait a minute, we, we, we understand, we agree. OK, what should we do? And, and I want to say, it's simple. Would, would we put together, let's say, support rallies? Do we uh, send out flyers? Anything that you can do within your scope of influence to get the word out. For some people, that's a conversation with a few families and neighbors next door. For other people, that's organizing a rally because you have a gift. For other people, that could be something like me who's, you know, okay. talking to thousands of people. Um, it, it, it just, it, it really depends. And, and look, my thing is I'm not directly affected by some of the things that I stand up for on a regular basis. Like for example, I'm constantly standing against the public school system. I'm not affected by that because my children are homeschooled. Right. But, um, I, I have a stake in it because I, I care about our country. So I go to school board meetings. I get involved. One of the things that you can do, <clears throat> and it's really critical. Start going to city council meetings. Start getting involved in local access issues. There we go. They relate. They hugely relate to what happens on the national level. If you're not going, if you don't know the names of the school board members, if you don't know the names of your city council members, you, there's already a problem. You know, one of the greatest honors of my life as a pastor 
is when this season comes around and the only I get tons and tons and tons of calls from people running for office. They all call me and they say, I want, I need your support. I need your support. I need you. I get it. I just had uh, someone in the city of Signal Hill. He's uh, running for city council. He's going to make it. He'll win. He, he will do it. He'll be a great candidate and I'm going to support him, right? Who uh, called me and just directly asked me for his support before he even started really running. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? I love that because we should use the scope of influence that we have to directly influence people because there's a lot of lies that are out there. Which, and, and and we need to set the record straight and we need to tell people. What I've been telling the people on the buses for ages, but here's a good place to say this again, and I'll probably be using this again, but um, we need to get off the couches and yes. we need to get off the, the easy boys and we need to go and, and actually, because the enemy is off its couch. The enemy is in the streets, okay? And the enemy is walking uh, through. The enemy is making noise on, on YouTube. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm getting the YouTube feed Okay, from the other side oh, sometimes, and, it, and it's scary. I mean, it is definitely scary. And and maybe that will lead into um, the next subject that we want to talk about that happened at the embassy. And, I, and I'll show you something, right? Because we'll talk about that subject in a minute, but I'll, I'll show you something that, that will also blow your mind. It will give you some perspective on how things work, right? And even when you don't think it can make a difference, it makes a difference, right? Okay. And, and I'll show you this in just a second. But before I do, Brad, thank you, bro, for your super chat. I didn't even pay attention to those. You guys that are super chatting, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for that. Brad says, flashbang called climate change the best exist or the, the last existential threat. Uh, what world does this clown live in? Yeah, Biden is, is uh, Biden. When he says flashbang, he's referring to Biden. Why? Because when you drop a flashbang in a room, people are disoriented. That's why we call him Flashbang, because Biden is is just, he's out of his mind. He's completely disoriented. He's crazy. I got, maybe I'll get Chrissy to send me a picture of, of one of the cats that we have at home that is kind of very much like Biden. And Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> just out of his, well, we'll just get, we'll get there. Um, and then, uh, Dean, thank you. You say, happy birthday, Joseph. Cadiz, uh, get yourself some monkey gear. That's awesome. Thank you, by the way, Dean. Um, okay, so... So so let me let me just back up by uh, talking about this one aspect of uh, uh, how things can change. OK, mm -hmm. some of you saw this already. Matter of fact, a lot of you saw this and uh, you only you're the only one that has the advantage of looking at this numbers wise because nobody else can see it because they're not where you're sitting. But um, I I went to me and you went to the screening. Yeah of the murders of so many of your fellow countrymen, right? That it was just terrible, right? So when we were in the lobby waiting for the screening, you know, we're all talking to different people and, you know, and as we're talking, David and I are talking and we're doing our registration and all this kind of stuff. I, um, I see Jack Hibbs walk into the room mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, Jack's kind of busy. I'm not going to really say anything. And Jack sees me, walks right up to me and we just start talking because, you know, Jack and I were dear friends, like we're close brothers. So we start talking and we catch up and Jack says, James, did you see, dude, did you see the prayer that I did on Capitol Hill? And I'm about to tear up. And I'm like, bro, I was so proud of you. You know what I told my wife? I told my wife th the prayer that he's reading right now, I promise you, was not the prayer that, that he, he sent in to get approved. In. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you're right, man. I just changed it at the last minute because the Lord convicted me and so on and so forth. He goes, well, the reason why I'm asking you that question is, did you hear what happened? I go, what do you mean? What, what do you mean what happened? He goes, bro, they're coming after me. Ilhan Omar and 26 other or 25 other Congress people, they just lost their minds. They're, they're writing a letter. I'm like, bro, give me all the information. Send it my way. And I am going to make a video where I'm just going to just completely blast all of this. I'm going to put it on blast. I'm going to tell the whole world what happened. And so can I just tell you something that went through my head when I told this to Jack? So when I told this to Jack, I'm like, man, when people see me blast somebody for like an hour and a half, which is something I do on a somewhat of a regular basis, those videos, especially when they're political, don't do that well. Which all I do are political. I mean, I do nothing but political yeah. stuff. But I'm like, those videos don't do all that well. But like, I had a fire burning in me. And I'm like, I'm going to do this because this is wrong. And I'm going to pray that this get a little bit of exposure and that people will understand and recognize how wicked this is. Right? Okay. So, 
so I tell Jack, I'm like, Jack, I'm going to record this video and I'm going to get it out on Friday. He goes, James, Friday's the day after tomorrow. And I go, no, no, the next Friday. So I start working on it, do a lot of research, get all the work done. I do the, I do the film. I, I put it all together. And if a video does really, really well, right? When I say well, I mean average, you know, anywhere from average to average good. Then the first day, 50,000 people will watch it, yep. right? And that's a pretty good video for our, for our channel. You know, yep. maybe 50,000, 60,000 people will end up watching it, okay? And that's, you know, first anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. And, and that'll, that'll be a good video, right? So um, I, I thought, well, if I make this video, you know, some people get ticked off. And uh, my guess is that within the first 24 to 48 hours, 15,000 people will watch it. And hopefully that'll be enough to, to rock things up a little bit, like to shake the crowd and get people bothered and to start calling their congressmen and so on and so forth. And Jack and I prayed and we said, Lord, we, we just prayed that this would get out to as many people as possible and that this would, this would show up. Okay. In the first, se it's been 72 hours, right? In the first 72 hours, you want to take a look at how many people have watched this video? Whoa. Okay, 73,000 people have watched at least 30% or more of the video, okay? Look at how many eyes it actually touched. Whoa. Well, 2.3 million. That's a huge number. <laughs> so so here's my thing, right? When I, when I just stop to look at this, to God be the glory. Amen. And this is what I tell people all the time. It's like if you would just simply use the scope of influence that God has given you, What's to say that God can't take that message and just blow it out of the water? So I'm telling you guys, let people know, and I can guarantee you this. Okay, can I, can I just say this? I, I, I want everybody to understand this, okay? I, this is super important. I want everybody to understand that there are guaranteed at least one, if not two or three of the people that signed this letter, watch my video. There's no way it gets out with those guys being named to a crowd that big where it doesn't happen. And you know what? Now they're going to think twice the next time they mess with Jack. Though so, Ilhan Omar and the rest of the squad. Oh, they're evil. Okay. Ilhan Omar is, is one of the most demonic, wicked, evil individuals in, 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 in the house okay, right but now. Here's the thing. A quick question. I mean, you've gotten you've been watching this. Oh yeah. Was Biden as stupid as AOC is when he was younger? No. Biden, believe it or not, Biden in his earlier years was really smart. Evil, but smart. How, I mean, I'm just, I'm just cognitive. Watching. His cognitive ability but, has, but, has diminished. But she is so... AOC is actually dumb. Yeah, She's I mean, not as dumb as the press secretary. Oh, okay. The press secretary is probably the dumbest female in Washington. But AOC is pretty dumb. But the problem about AOC, everybody has to respect her, Right. Everybody needs to learn how to respect Alexandria Cortez because she is a political monster. So she knows how to take her influence and influence minds. Okay. And she is. And here yep. we go. And here we go again. All right. How is this influence being spread? Let's go back to where we started with this. How about a governor? What's the role that he's going to play in all of this? Yeah. So... Look, the, the, it's, it's very difficult to be able to see this. I think the governor is probably going to posture himself to be the vice president of the United States mm. with the hope that one day he'll be the president. The problem is, um, yeah, there's, it, look, the governor of the state of California is, is so wicked on so many levels, it's not even funny. So let's talk about deception. Shall we do this? Yep. Because we'll talk about the airman story in just a minute, right? But let me bring you this video. And actually, this is like, this is going to disgust you. Okay? I'm serious. Like, this is going to make you sick. And everybody, I just, look, I want everybody to brace themselves for what you're about to see. Because um, what, what you're going to see is, uh, uh, look, it's, it's just nothing short of just absolutely ugly. Okay? So who, I just want everybody to know that. Who are we watching? We're going to watch Gavin Newsom. All right. The governor of the state of California. And by the way, I'm not going to bring a lot of comment on this. And the reason why I'm not going to do a lot of commentary on this is because this Friday I'm releasing a video that's going to really show everybody what it means to double down on stupid. Okay. Watch what Gavin Newsom says about 
the leader of God's country. Okay. Okay, watch this. Let me ask you about another big issue in this election. Um, Michigan has a primary, as you know, coming up on Tuesday. Progressive Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib is urging Democrats to vote against President Biden to send a message uh, because of his handling of the war in Gaza, which she opposes. Uh, what is your response to Congressman Tlaib in this? Well, I, I want to say this before she before there's a thing. So Talib is is saying, I don't want Biden to be supported. But that is something that she's being told to do. This is not a. This is not a. There's so she's a lot saying of people to vote against Biden. <clears throat> that's right. They're all. They're all running a movement right now before the DNC, before the Democratic National Committee uh, meeting happens. Okay. They're all running a very public campaign against Biden. Okay. What they want to do is they want to in that time, using their voters and the power that they have in that committee meeting, right. In the convention mm -hmm. to actually vote for a new candidate for president and vice president. And I can promise you that person is gonna be Michelle Obama. Mm. They don't wanna put Kamala. So nobody, but nobody's talking about it yet. I no, mean, they're, I talking, don't hear, they're talking about it. Everybody's I don't hear Michelle it. Obama. I mean, or oh, what am I missing? Uh, no, everybody's talking about it. It's all over the news. It, it, it's it's a, it's becoming a mainstream idea. Big Mike is becoming very popular. That's what I call her, Big Michelle Mike. Michelle or Michael? I call her. I call her Michael. Uh, you can see your Big Adam's apple, but I'm I'm, I'm, I'm there, just there's, that there's a lot of fluid. Is flu? I mean, doesn't what? What does it matter what she is? It's what she said she is. Yeah, I, it's we're gonna. I'm just gonna leave that be. I call her Big Mike. That's that's just my that's my nickname. For her. Right. I call her. Yeah, I, everybody who's been watching me for a while, they understand what it means when I go <laughs> Big Mike. That's she's a Big Mike. Okay, so this is like this is something that you should not be surprised with. That's okay, true. all right. So uh, look at his response to this because it's this is just crazy. Okay, watch this. I have great respect for people who have difference of opinion. I, I deeply understand. I'm a, I'm a, look, I'm a father of four. I have a very close friend who's lost nine family members. Okay, he's a father of four. He's cheated on his wife with the woman that it, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna go there. We'll just we'll just leave that alone. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. He because I I despise this man. I despise. He is evil. He's such a dark man. The thing, the reason why people tend to lean into him. Is because he's a good. He's good at talking. He's good no, at. He looks at good. He's, he's a good showman. He looks good, right? He's a very attractive man. He's not an ugly man, right? He knows how to carry himself, but he represents. I mean, the devil is what an angel of light. <laughs> I mean, he opposes as an angel of light. Yep. Okay. okay. So the, it, it, here we go. In Gaza, nine. It breaks my heart. Mm. I want this war to end like everybody wants an end. And I say this as a guy who was there a few weeks after October seventh, meeting with the president, meeting with the prime minister that saw firsthand the atrocities in those videos uh, and is here recognizing... Meeting with the president. You know what he means when he says meeting with the president, right? Well, the Israeli president. M uh, also, Mahmoud Abbas. I believe he met with, with ah, Abbas. Ah, he did? I did I not know so. that. I believe so. I'm almost certain that he met I with Abbas. Yeah. Okay. So, and yes, he did meet with Herzog, which, by the way, it, that would have I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for that meeting. Herzog's an interesting kind of dimension. My right? whole point. I would I would have been very... Did you, by the way, see what he said in a very candid moment when he was with uh, Nortishby? No, but I, 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 I don't remember exactly what he said, but there was a lot of pushback on it. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole other story. Okay, here we go. Not without a, a sliver of any doubt that we need to eliminate Hamas and advance a two-state solution. That said, I deeply am mindful about the humanitarian crisis. And Can I just stop and just say this? Did you do you catch how slick he is? Yeah. We need to eliminate Hamas and and, and, and advance and, a two-state solution. And advance a two-state solution. solution, even though the two-state <laughs> solution means the elimination of the Jewish race because Hamas doesn't want a two-state solution. No. By the way, the Palestinian Authority doesn't want a two-state solution. They yeah, want a one-state solution. But it, it makes, it, it helps them. It, it's a virtue signal. Yep, it is. It's a virtue signal. And, and the other side is virtue signaling very, very clearly. But everybody knows that it's not going to work. And, and Hamas has said it very clearly. I mean, I, I put up a couple of videos that, that actually, I mean, in their own words, they say they don't want a two-state solution. Nope, they don't. They, they, but America and, does. And I and the last one that we were together that I, tran oh, it was me and Tom. I translated that video of, of the... Uh, uh, Khalid Mashal. Yeah, Khalid Mashal. And, and in, he was in Qatar. 
being interviewed, I believe. I El think Jazeera. we did that together. Yeah, yeah, we did that together. It was me and you. Okay. And he had his charcoal wiped off of his head no, that I, day. That was insane. Okay. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, here we go. That's what she's expressing as it relates to Biden and it relates to this primary. I mean, it's, it, it's not even a close bet or call. And at the end of the day, we should be quadrupling down on the accomplishments of the Biden administration in Michigan in particular. And I'm going to have to be mindful of where the unions have been in that respect and where he's doing on manufacturing. Isn't Dearborn and in addressing Michigan? The issues monop- yes. Okay. He's, he's a cuckoo. But he know, but he he he's deceiving. What you're seeing is you're seeing him outright gaslight. He is just lying. He's just lying. Okay. Isn't Dearborn, Michigan, the largest Muslim community in the United States? Uh, next to one other. Who's bigger? Garden Grove. Ooh. Here in California, Southern California. Well, I got to go there one time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I need some good food, but you know. Oh I yeah, you're I, gonna I, get you're gonna get very good food over there. Yeah, Dearborn, Garden Grove, it's fast, most rapidly growing, as well as Culver City. Three. Matter of fact, Culver City has the biggest mosque on the West Coast. Interesting. With all of the... I wonder, I wonder what would, uh, what would happen if I walked into a mosque. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get ourselves in trouble on YouTube. Yeah, maybe, maybe we'll go film it. What do you think? <laughs> I think we should do that one of these days. Yeah, walk into a mosque. Yeah, that should be fun. With a Star of David on your... Yeah. Actually, with our dog tags. With a Star of David. shirt. You know. I love that. I love that. That's good. Monopolistic power as you're addressing, addressing more broadly the economic opportunities and manufacturing supply chain opportunities of which he's delivered for the people. As, he's as delivered. you say, Governor. He's delivered for the people of the United States like you've delivered for the people of California, you flipping liar. Well, I think he's delivered to all the people crossing the border. That what yeah. is, is he's, what deliver, he's delivered. He's delivered to the illegals. That's yeah. right. That's right. He's delivered to the illegals. Okay, but listen to what he says because what he's about to say is just insane. You were recently in Israel. Do you want to see a ceasefire? Well, I want to see the war end. I want Hamas eliminated. Should I want President Biden host- call for I one? I want these hostages returned home. I'm going to respect the president's capacity to lead at this difficult moment. I know his private heart on this. Of course, we understand what's happening as it relates to the humanitarian crisis. As he said, it breaks my heart. You can't be a human being and watch that. And so that has to be addressed. And with regard to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who I've visited and I've worked with. Get yourself ready because you're going to be enraged. If you're like me, you're going to be enraged (laughs) when you hear this. Just get yourself ready, folks. Brace yourself. Everybody brace yourself because it's going to be ugly. I just want to let everybody know. Here we go. In the past, he's doubling down on stupid as it relates to the two-state solution and walking away from that. And I appreciate what? and applaud what the Biden administration did this oh, week. Oh, yeah. Lincoln. So now, governor in California is going to tell us what we need? The governor of the California says that BB is doubling down on stupid when the governor of California can't even speak another language. He doesn't. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna say that okay. BB is doubling down on stupid. A man... Who speaks what six languages, F- five or six languages very fluently? Who is an avid, 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 smart? He, I, I, I'm not gonna sit here and and sing the praises of BB, but I just want to simply say this: whether or not anybody wants to admit it, BB has contributed a lot to where Israel is today in a lot of very good ways. I'm gonna just say that number one. Number two, the other thing I want to say. You want to talk about doubling down on stupid. Gavin Newsom is the absolute king or queen, whatever you want to call it, of doubling down on stupid. How bad we had a budgetary surplus of billions and billions of dollars, and now we're in a deficit. I, I, I want to take this a different level. And again, this is something that I've been dealing with while I've been here, and that is this, okay? People on this side of the ocean having very strong opinions about what should happen on that side of the ocean. People who's, he, he mentioned he has kids, he understands that, okay, and, and he, he knows about the hostages, but you're not making decisions about your kids, you're not making decisions about your hostages. And the very strong opinions that people on this side have about something very complex and very painful on that side sometimes makes me angry. 
Well, James, this, this, we on our side, sitting on this side of the world, with no experience about these kind of situations, with no connection to the people that are in the tunnels, with no funerals that we've had to go to in the last three months. I don't know if you know, but it's funeral after funeral after funeral in Israel. And, and with no um, moving out of my neighborhood in order not to get hit by a rocket, I'm sitting here and saying, you're stupid. I know better than you do. For, forgive me. Let me just say this, because this pig has no problem saying that Netanyahu's doubling down on stupid and your pile of garbage authority that you base that on is the fact that you have nine friends, and I assume that he's referring to Palestinian friends that have been lost. I think he's lying. I don't think he's telling the truth about that. I think he's a liar, but that's beside the point, okay? I just saw a guy right yesterday speaking. We talked to a few people like this when we were in, uh, in, in the Getty. I saw a guy speaking that said, he lost 200, 200 close people in his kibbutz. Yep. 200 in a day. No, no, here, here's my problem again. Okay, you can say, I've got an opinion. You can say, I think. But you don't call somebody who is making those decisions stupid or you don't doubling down on stupid it's yeah, way worse than calling you don't, them stupid you don't sit on this side of the ocean and say i know what should happen i know what is right and if you don't see it my way you're not only stupid you are doubling down on stupid gavin newsom is the literal king of doubling down on stupid he he is absolutely absolutely and yes i'm gonna just say this and, and uh, I'm going to have to apologize because Brad brought out something that I probably should be rebuked for. And I, I'll just humble myself and I'll apologize. Brad was offended by the fact that I called Gavin Newsom a pig because it's offensive to pigs. So I apologize for calling Gavin Newsom a pig because it is offensive to pigs. <laughs> and I'm sorry for offending the pigs that are out there. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> but it's disgusting. It's disgusting. This, this, this clown... This clown has the nerve to say something like this. He doesn't understand our culture. He doesn't understand our people. And you know the thing that I think is the funniest thing about this is? You stick that man in downtown Gaza and he's dead. Instantly. Well, uh, they hate men like him. I'll make another connection here and, and a lot of people don't realize. Uh, we're in the middle of an election day today in Israel. Our uh, municipal elections are taking place here today. I don't know if uh, Israel's a little bit different. We don't have states. We right, have, that's right. We're like one state. So you've got the, uh, how do you say, government elections. That's where the prime minister and the government is, is elected. And today we're having municipality elections, I think is what you call them, or local elections. Do you understand that they're having elections under the threat of missiles on, literally, on the polling stations, on yeah. the election stations? yep. yep. And what I find fascinating is, wait a minute, that wait a minute. Arabs are voting in. That the Arabs are voting in, in the Arab municipalities also, in Arab communities. There's an actual election going on right now where Muslims can vote, and it's being done under the threat of the missiles. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is Israel is a democracy. Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. That's right. You're looking at Israel actually being democratic under the threat of these missiles and under the threat of these attacks. And people go out of their houses to make to 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 to, to elect their officials. And and where's the apartheid? Where is the where's the non-democratic? Where's the genocide that Look, was I've here? said this, man, I've said this before anytime. If you want to commit genocide, don't learn how to do it from Israel. Mm, okay. Because well, if you want to commit genocide, Israel's not the place to go to learn how to commit genocide. Because there are no, millions no, and millions and thing. millions of more people. Here's the thing. Has anybody in the news said, look at the democracy that is actually taking place in the Middle East? No. If they hate the democracy here, how are they going to tell people to look at the democracy in the Middle East? So I'm telling you guys, Israel's democratic. Elections are being taken, are taking place right now. They closed the polls. I just know so. Uh, uh, t six minutes ago, they closed. Yeah. What do you call them? The, yeah, that's the, right. The yeah, the polls. Yeah, the polls. They closed the polls yeah. six minutes ago, uh, and uh, six or seven minutes ago. And and what I'm trying to say is, 
I, I'm proud of this little nation that is actually pulling off democratic elections in the middle of this situation. I have a right to be proud of our democracy. I'm proud. I, I, I'm, my mom and my dad were both born and raised in Egypt. I'm first generation into this country from Egyptian parents, and I was raised to love Israel. And, I, and I'm, I'm proud of that. Well, Let me show I, you I actually heard a CC one said that he was you know, elected democratically. By ninety eight point seven percent of all yeah, of the by ninety eight. Oh man, I mean, I appreciate what he's done with the Islamic Brotherhood, but come on, man. Yeah, there's nothing, let's, demo- let's there's nothing democratic about come that. Come on, man. Come on. And Arafat was a straight man who was who who was born in Palestine. So so here's right? the thing. Maybe maybe to tie one thing together. Okay, people keep on saying, wait a minute, the Hamas was democratically elected. You know that. Oh, I mean, we we all know that. Yeah, but what did they do the minute they were democratically elected? They they, they dismantled they, the democracy that elected them. Listen, they dismantled the people that represented the opposition. They yep. threw them off buildings and they they had public executions. And yeah. they, they what are but you talking Hamas about? But Hamas is not democratic today. No, they're not. They weren't democratic. Listen, they probably weren't even democratic back in two thousand seven. But who are we joking? In what kind of a democratic election mm-hmm. does somebody win as the prominent party and then take its opposition and just single-handedly start murdering its opposition? What, the, what is the name in Islam for the deception? There's an Arab word. A taqiyya. A taqiyya. Yeah. So, that's what yeah. we say. We say taqiyya. That's, that's that the is, word. That is accepted deception in the name of Islam. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, so democracy in the Muslim world is part of the taqiyya. That's right. It's, 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 it's so right. It's absolutely right. So... There's going to be two videos I'm going to show you of, of BB responding. Okay. And I'm proud of his response. The first one I think was a little more, actually both of them are a little bit more measured, but I do appreciate, you, let me just say this. You tell me, Gavin Newscum, <laughs> you tell me, is that, if, if, you That's can call BB one. whatever you want to call him. He's not stupid. He, uh, that man has my respect. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. All right. And I got to tell you, yeah. I, I had the privilege of being able to talk to his brother off the record. His brother is smart. Yeah. They, they don't make stupid no, people no, no. in the Netanyahu his, his family, man. His father was smart. Oh, my goodness. And his father, some of the stuff I learned about his father from, uh, from his brother, mm-hmm. ooh, man, man, what an amazing, what an amazing family. What an amazing family. So, so my governor is rejecting the two, is, is, re, is, is calling Baby stupid for rejecting this two state solution. Let's yeah. see what Baby says. I'm surprised that you call him your guy. I, I know. I get it. We well, have to I call get, him that because we I live in it. California. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get oh. my head around this one. Okay, BB, get him. Does the President Biden that hugged you? Look, look at his eyes. <laughs> BB, you could tell. Like, if you know him, like, he's kind of got that. I'm looking up this way because I'm mad, but I'm not going to show anybody. Watch, watch. After October 7th, resemble the same one that seems upset with you now, saying your reaction in Gaza has been over the top. What's your reaction to the seemingly withering support from this administration? Look, I appreciate the president's support uh, at the beginning of the war and uh, throughout. Uh, we've had our differences of opinion, but we've uh, been able to agree on uh, the, you know on the three war aims: destroying Hamas, bringing back the hostages, uh, and. Uh, making sure that Gaza is not a threat to Israel. But I think that there are natural differences of opinion. I can tell you one thing, though. You know, I just came out of a meeting with Colonel John Spencer. John Spencer is the world expert on urban warfare. He mm. heads the urban warfare department in West Point. Uh, and Which, by the way, he is that guy's the gold standard for ur- all things John urban Spencer. warfare. Yep. Well, what does he say? Oh, well, listen, let's take a listen. He's compared what Israel is doing uh, in trying to fight these terrorists right. who not only systematically target ter- uh, civilians, but hide behind their right. civilians. He said that there is no other army that is in the world that has gone to the lengths that Israel has gone to Understood. to prevent civilian casualties. Uh, and, and he's right. Uh, so I don't think our reaction is right. over the top. I think the Israeli army is setting the gold standard of how to fight terrorists embedded in civilian neighborhoods, in hospitals, in schools, and yet minimize <laughs> the... Uh, the ratio of uh, civilian casualties. And I'll tell you, every civilian casualty is a tragedy. And they're all, they should all be brought right. to the uh, doorstep of Hamas that is using them as human shields. Yeah, so that's a great response. Now, I'm going to show you the, the other response that he gives. Uh, and this is the one that's more entertaining uh, because this is him addressing, of course, the president first. 
right? And and then now he's going to address the response of uh, the governor, the clown, <laughs> um, which is ugh, anyway. It's I'm just yeah, it's ridiculous. But look what he says here because this is going to be the more entertaining one. And again, it just shows you how witty and how smart. Uh, the oh, prime minister know, of Israel yeah. is. He's just, I just love I mean, him. He's in, he's in his environment here. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. There's a lot about him that I really appreciate. So here we go. With regard to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who I've visited and I've worked with in the past, he's doubling down on stupid as it relates to the two state solution and mm. walking away from that. Let's work to get these hostages home, to work to eliminate Hamas and rebuild Gaza and advance a two state solution. Are you doubling down on. Idiot. <laughs> okay, sorry, I had to do that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, let me rewind that. I'm well, sorry. Look, I, I met uh, the governor when he was. Are you doubling down on stupid? Well, look, I, I met uh, the governor when he was <laughs> here, uh, and I hope he had a chance to tour the country because then he would have seen that. Uh, this is not my personal position. It's the position of the people of Israel. They're not stupid. They understand that to just offer a Palestinian state is to give a platform for the uh, uh, repeated attempts to uh, annihilate the Jewish state. And Hamas has already promised that if it has, if it's reconstituted, if it, it, Israel doesn't win the war, then they'll do this October 7th massacre again. over and over and over again, their words. So I don't think the people of Israel are stupid. I think they're actually very smart. That's why they support my position in achieving total victory, mm. uh, defeating Hamas, bringing back the hostages, and making sure that right. Gaza doesn't pose a threat to Israel again. And that means that Israel will have to have the overriding security control over that territory for the foreseeable future. That doesn't come with uh, unlimited uh, Palestinian sovereignty. I think I think right. the people are smart. Yep. <laughs> I love how he treated that. Okay, so let's tie this into what we talked about today and what I saw. And, and I got this from the Israeli news because Bibi was quoting this. Because Bibi was quoting this when he talked about a reaction to what Biden said about Benjamin Netanyahu, and he said a couple of bad things too, okay? And it turns out that not only the people in Israel are not stupid, it turns out that the people in the United States are not stupid. 100%. 100%. You want me to read that? Yep, let's do it. Okay, let me read this. I, I'll, I'll pull it up because, uh, and I wasn't surprised when David sent it to me. As a matter of fact, I, I was uh, out with the kids on the road this morning around, oh, I don't know, 7, seven in the morning or so, um, and so I wasn't paying attention to much of my text messages, uh, which is why I missed this until I came into the studio. But David sent me this little text. He said, an overwhelming majority of voters say that they support Israel over Hamas in their ongoing war, according to a poll released Monday. The Har This is Harvard, by the this way. This is Harvard Cap. Yeah. Yeah. Harvard. Yeah. Okay. So this is Harvard Cap's Harris poll found 80% of respondents said they supported Israel over Hamas in the conflict, compared with 20% who said they sided with Hamas more. It's January 22nd, 2024. Yep. And, and Caps another, Harris, guys. So, so here's the thing. We're not thinking that they're biased towards Israel, okay? And what I'm kind of, I was surprised. What, what kind of jumped out at me was, if you watch my video feed, if you watch what comes down from the algorithms from my YouTube, my Instagram, and my Facebook, okay, you get a feeling that the vast majority of Americans are anti-Israel. Hate Israel. That's Hate right. Israel. Yep. And here we've got a number that says, no, that's not the case. And that's not the case. Most people, even in this situation where we are today, watching the war, realize what's going on. And realize that Israel has to take on Hamas. You want to know why most people support Israel fighting Hamas? What? Because the people are beginning to be scared to death because it's unfathomable that something so atrocious could happen to the Jews when their borders are some of the most secure borders in the world. And yet our borders have become the least secure borders in the world. Oh, you guys, know what? do you have a border? I mean, in essence, it's, it, it, we're beginning to say no. You have an easy, you have an easier time breaking through the southern border than you will coming across the Canadian border. And I never thought I would say that. But but here's the thing, okay? Um, I'm realizing 
that what we've been doing here, James, maybe has not gone in vain. Maybe there no, are there are people who are looking at the situation, are looking at the, the reality of the situation and not buying in. Now, don't get me wrong. The media is conveying the other side. So when I Googled it this morning, because I saw this on the Israeli news last night, and I'm saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't, this is, hasn't come down my, my regular feed. What comes down my regular feed is Israel's losing support. Israel is not being supported. You know, the world is not supporting Israel, blah, blah, blah. That's what's coming down. Another thing that's coming down my feed lately is Israel's losing the war. They're not going to win the war, blah, 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 Good blah. Luck. Okay. Okay. So, so that's what's being pushed out by the system. And on the other hand, you get a poll like this and says, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not true. There is support for Israel, and most of the world realizes that if we give in to this bully of the neighborhood, it's not going to stop. Okay. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. And uh, we have enough of a new audience because we're, our audience is growing. We have a lot of new people watching that there, uh, some people are asking who you are. So just so you know, this is David Tall. He's a very dear friend of mine, uh, raised in Israel. Uh, matter of fact, uh, was a major in the Israeli Defense Force. Technically, still is, although he's not active anymore. Because well, I've of, got the boots, but the uniform doesn't fit. You've aged out. Is I that, said I got the is? boots, but the <laughs> uniform doesn't fit anymore. David, in my opinion, is one of the most brilliant military minds I've ever spoken to when it comes to this subject, and I, I have learned so much from David on a whole in a whole bunch of areas related to uh israel uh it he's so he is a, a wealth of information and one of my closest friends and someone very dear to me so um so for those of you that are asking that are part of our audience that haven't been in these live shows that's who david is so that you know um and and i'm gonna say this my role is to be um the local israeli yeah i love that the local israeli we have I to mean, talk about that for a second yeah okay. we'll talk about that after offline i love that phrase the local israeli that's uh, who was it? Bring, Bruce Springsteen got a local hero. I'm, I'm not a hero, but uh, I'm I'm the local Israeli. It's my job to be the Israeli that you can ask the questions of, the Israelis who who really kind of brings what's going on. The Israeli that's going to get upset because a, a a governor on the other side of the world thinks that he has the the solutions and the answers to to our complex complex situation. <laughs> The one who takes it personally when people kind of say, you know, you, you're committing genocide. I mean, who, I mean, I am the Israeli army. I've been in that military force for 40 years. I know what it means. I've been a part of that military. Where's the genocide? I mean, again, I have personal knowledge of what happens in Gaza. I have personal knowledge of what happens in Janine and Ramallah. And I'm sorry to say, I have very, very personal knowledge of what happens in Lebanon, too. Okay, man, let's get real, too. Let's talk about what's going on with the Jews. Look at these numbers that I got in front. Like, look at these numbers. These numbers don't lie, right? A total of 851,000 Jews were in Arab countries. By the way, in this case, these are the only Arab countries. We're not talking about all 21 Arab countries. We're not talking about the many Muslim countries. We're just talking about a few Arab countries here. Algeria, Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, Libya, Morocco, Syria, Tunisia, Yemen, and Aden. That's the southern the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula. For those of you that don't know, Yemen, of course, being the south uh, 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 southwest section, and um, and Aden, of course, being the southeast section of the Arabian Peninsula. So those are the countries we're talking about. In those countries alone, there were eight hundred and fifty one thousand Jews in nineteen forty eight. Eight hundred and fifty one thousand. By the time that there were two, we got to 2011, I don't even know how this works, there were negative 6,200, which means they lost the count of many of them. And there's other reasons why that number got to where it was. By 2018, that number was at 3,330. Now that number is believed to be close to 400 in so, those countries, so most of which are diplomatic core members let's give this a name for what these numbers actually represent okay genocide no ethnic cleansing it's, that's ethnic right ethnic cleansing that's what and it you, is you're kicking people out of the nation because of their racial bracket 100 percent. and and who talks about it i mean look at look at these numbers where are all the jews that were in here you know the argument that i've been hearing a lot lately hmm. no this is not them getting kicked out of these countries this is them wanting to immigrate to their homeland that doesn't belong to them 
That's what I'm hearing about from a lot of people. And you know the funny thing about that is? Wait a minute. What's the difference between that and the Palestinians wanted, uh, wanting to move oh, in? It's, it's, there is no difference. But, but Well, actually, there is a difference because the difference is the Palestinians are wanting to go to a land that they say belongs to them that never did belong to them, number one, right? If you want to – look, do you want to know what the Palestinian homeland actually is? Everybody want to know what that is? <laughs> it's called Jordan. It's Jordan, okay? Well, Let's get real. What is the percentage of Palestinians in, in Jordan today? Oh, gosh, I wouldn't even be able to tell you I, I that number. Think, I think it's something like 65%. Is it really 65 now? Yeah. Okay, it's yeah, because that's 50. a lower number. That's a lower number than I thought, actually. It's more, it's more than 50. Yeah. And the Queen of Jordan. Oh, don't get me started on the Queen well, of Jordan. Well, she's Palestinian. Yeah. Don't, the, I mean, she can open up her, her palace to whoever wants to come. Yeah. Does and she? she and no, she, well, heck no. She, look, she, her, the, the, the Jordanians, uh, should we just talk about Hossein? And what happened in 1979? What, Black September? Yes. <laughs> Come on. Okay, but uh, that's the reason nobody wants Palestinians. Again, why doesn't Egypt want the Palestinians? I don't well, know if you know. One. The, Sinai, the... the Sinai Peninsula is empty. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course okay. it is. All right. And, and Sharm el Sheikh and all. You, do you know how mad Egyptians are right now at Palestinians okay. and Gaza? So, so here's the thing. All right. Jordan took in a million and a half refugees from Syria, from the Syrian civil war. They're actually situated in camps in Jordan. Jordan's half empty. I mean, most of Jordan is empty. Why doesn't Iraq? Why doesn't uh, Tunisia? Why doesn't uh, Sudan? Why, do, why don't all of these nations take any of the Palestinians? Nobody wants them because everywhere that the Palestinians went, they went to Jordan. OK, they tried to overthrow the government. They went to Lebanon. They overthrew the government. OK. They went wherever they went. Okay, that has been a problem. It is a death cult that is actually looking for grass to 100% grow. Hundred percent right. They are. They are in essence Islamic Brotherhood. Yes, but explain what Islamic Brotherhood is. If we've got new people, we need. They need to understand what this means. So, so, so that you understand, Islamic Brotherhood, and I'm going to oversimplify everything. It started right? off in even, Egypt. Yeah, it did. It started in Egypt. And has been around for the longest time. As a matter of fact, it was believed that Islamic Brotherhood is who murdered Sadat when Sadat was killed in the early 80s. Was it not? Uh, well, no, it was. Come on. We all know that it was Islamic Brotherhood that <laughs> killed him, right? I mean, they said they did. <clears throat> but, well, not only did they say they did, but he was being threatened avidly and openly by 1980. And when they kept warning him, hey, 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 be careful, please. They wanted him to wear bulletproof vests when he went out and, and spoke and, and all of that. It was, as a matter of fact, it was really interesting. If you remember, the prime in, the prime minister of Israel in 1980 contacted Sadat and told Sadat, "We have we intelligence have in Egypt that they're going to kill you. Be careful." So that so, was Menachem Begin. Yeah, but that's right. That made the peace agreement. He was Israel's right wing, hawkish, Likud leader. Yeah. Okay. Who actually was the first Israeli representative that actually signed a peace deal with an Arab nation. Anwar Sadat was the president of Egypt that fought against Israel, but actually extended its hand in peace and was killed for making peace with Israel. Yeah, not only that, but it's interesting. I, I never, uh, it's really funny. I always, uh, I, you know, it's funny. I, I always call that peace treaty one that was uh, God ordained in many ways, because mm -hmm. I'm a beneficiary of that peace treaty. By the way, okay. J just so that you yeah. know, right? There's there's some interesting things, and there there's a story behind that. By the way, because my parents were already in California at the time that the peace treaty was oh, signed. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My mom and my dad immigrated from Egypt, 1974. So right after the 73 right, war. Right. Right after the Yom Kippur. Right after. Right after the Yom Kippur war. Uh, there's some interesting dynamics, by the way, uh, that relate to that whole thing and, and why that actually happened. When my dad left Egypt, the reason why my dad left Egypt is because they knew that that war, um, my uh, my Uncle John, I believe it is, would have been dragged into that war. Mm. And by my dad leaving Egypt, that meant that now my Uncle John was going to be the first born now. And the rules in the Egyptian military is he can't get pulled into the military if he's the firstborn because he's the one that stands in line to be the head of the household. Yeah. So that's why my dad did that. My dad did that to keep my Uncle John from actually having to go into the military, especially if you know my Uncle John. My Uncle John is a just extraordinarily brilliant man 
who's a medical doctor, mm. very, very smart man. His son is also a medical doctor, Andrew, um, homeschool, and he's a brilliant doctor. I mean, Andrew, I'm so proud of Andrew. Andrew's such a great guy. And man, I have a lot Where of cousins. Where are they now? I have lots of, they're, all, they're in America now. Okay. But I have lots of cousins, man, that are doctors. I got, I got cousins that are doctors. Like Timothy's a doctor. I got several. It's funny, man. I got a whole, there's a whole bunch of uh, Dr. Cadices in my family, including my brother and my sister-in-law. But besides the point, let me, let me just say this. Um, that's kind of what moved them in that direction, right? So I've always been very close to Egyptian politics and Israeli politics just because of the stand that my grandmother had mm -hmm. and, and my grandfather had uh, with all of that. But I still, uh, and, I, and I, I just have to keep saying this, this was not, um, this was Golda's peace treaty, if you really think about it. I mean, in many yes. ways it was Golda's. And so that met Golda yeah. when, when he was here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you remember, uh, there's a, a picture that I have that one day I'm going to frame in my office of the two of them together on the tarmac uh, <laughs> talking that I is just one of the most precious pictures. You know where I bought it from? I bought it at the Nixon Library. Huh, because at the Nixon Library, there's a, a bronze statue of the two of them together. I did not know that. While they're, while they're walking together hand in hand. It's it's one of the most... By the way, one of the scenes in the movie has Golda and, and Sadat talking to oh, each other. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you see yeah, the movie Golda. Great, it was a great movie. If you haven't seen Golda, see the movie Golda. Love that. That movie was such a good movie. Although it made her look like a crazy chain smoker, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if she was a real like if she smoked no, she that was much. A chain she was smoker. hardcore. She was. Yeah, yeah. They spent a lot of time drawing that picture, but she was a, a an absolutely brilliant woman. Well, the first woman head of a, of state, oh, I yeah. think, in the, in the Western world. Again, we're going back to, okay, where are the feminists? Where are they? Yeah. Oh, I know. Let's I know. Go, let's I know. go there. I mean, come on. A woman head of state in the Middle East? Come on, Habibi. So. <laughs> and a woman head of state that pretty much brings the most powerful leader in the Middle East to his knees. Mm -hmm. More powerful than the than the royal yeah, family in did, Saudi Arabia. She did make a serious mistake, the kind of mistake that we had on October seventh. Yeah, we, we had also. That. We uh, do and, get and, that. Uh, she should have listened. She should have listened October's, to October's Mossad. October is a, a, a Balagan month. For they us. they told her. They said you need to be preemptive about this. You need to prepare, and she didn't. And it was a huge mistake, well, and she paid dearly for it. We're learning stuff, but let's go back to to where where we started this. Eighty percent, I think it was eighty two. The poll says of Americans support Israel. Why am I not hearing this? Why am I not seeing it in different places? Because of the, the, the conglomerate of people that own the media? Didn't we say that all the people who own the media are Jews? Oh, come on, man. Ah. Hey, by the way, uh, this, is a sad, uh, this is a sad state of affairs. There are some of these people that are Jews that own the media yep. that haven't learned their lesson. We we have, and again, you don't need to be a genius to look at all the Bible. I mean... Again, Joshua's been coming up to my mind, okay? Joshua and Caleb were one of 12 were, were two of 12 tribes who were sent to tour the land and come back with a good report or come back with relevant information, okay, about what was going on. That's right. There were 10 tribes, all of them Jewish, all the same, That's who right. actually went down the other route. Okay, we keep on forgetting that there's always been Jewish people who didn't follow the way we are the representatives of the one that were i'm going to say the ones that were faithful generation after generation after generation despite the persecution and despite half of the people of coming out of egypt saying we should have gone back we should have stayed there we should have done that okay and and i'm people are surprised when jews sometimes support the other side, or Jews sometimes are not very pro-Israel. All you need to do is open up the Bible to find Jews that are not pro-Israel. Oh, yeah. And, and look, it, bro, I, I, there's so much to say about this. Like, I'm I'm at a loss for words in in, in many of this. I, I, I will say this because I do think it's, like, really important that I think we, we point out there were certain things that happened— back in the 70s that, that like as we're talking about the what led to the peace treaty and so on and so forth that were absolutely miraculous and and very god ordained but if you look at the history of Israel's wars since 1948 there's not a single war that Israel has been in that you cannot identify as god's hand being with Israel okay now mind you there were attacks that were horrific Israel suffered a lot like for example 
I mean, my gosh, we lost a lot, a lot of Jewish lives in the Sinai, you know, with the big old mistake that got made. In 73. Uh, in 73. I mean, a oh, massive, no. massive. Let, let, let me go back to 67. Oh. Okay. Oh. And don't forget, I'm five years old. I'm living in Jerusalem. And, you know, people talk about the Six Day War as this great, you know, uh, miracle and this great war. But I'm going to say the, la the war lasted six days. On day zero of the Six Day War, Israel did not know they were going to win. Oh, yeah. A lot of people forget this. I mean, and by the way, this is where public opinion on Israel actually switched. Until 67, we were the David, okay, fighting the Arab Goliath. After 67, because we won the war, all of a sudden we're not the David, we're something else, okay? But I remember at the eve of 67, five years old, sitting in, in Jerusalem, we were living in a German colony in Jerusalem, and, and my mom and my dad saying, um, you know, my mom says to my dad, what happens if we lose the war? And my dad says, you know, Zella, we have American passports. At least they won't kill us. Because there was an underlying feeling in, in, on day zero of the Six-Day War that if the Arabs win the war, it's going to be a massacre. If the Arab win, Arabs win the war, and again. Which it would have been. Which, I mean, look what's happened, you know. All these years later, okay, if the Arabs had won the war, it would have been an 8th of October on, on, a, on a nationwide scale, okay? And, and we saw what they can do. We saw what they say they would do, and we saw what they did, uh, and, and I'm not surprised. So what I'm trying to say is we never thought that we were going to win all these wars. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, and w uh, with 67, th there's also a lot to be said there because— 67, in my opinion, was the, the modern day, for lack of a better term, the modern day Masada, uh, with the exception of a victory as a result. The, the mindset mm -hmm. was, was, we're not letting them take us. Yep. So we're just going to go because like, you have to understand how fearful that was to see virtually every Arab neighbor coming in on, on Israel. And, and, and then to think... There's not a single Jew that thought in a million years that they would not only win, but that they would gain territory, that they would gain land. I mean, who would have ever thought about that? But here we are, James. We're back at this. I mean, think about this. Israel is fighting a war right now on, I think, seven fronts or eight fronts. Easily. I mean, okay. We're fighting Hamas in Gaza. Yep. All right. Uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. Okay. Uh, Daesh, ISIS in, in Syria. Easily. Okay. Uh, the Islamic uh, movements in Iraq. Yep. The Houthis in Yemen. Okay. The Iranians. Okay. Are are orchestrating all of this? Um, I mean, Yemen. You have, you, like you said, the Houthis in Yemen. Mm -hmm. You have a problem that's beginning to show its ugly face in Aden. Okay. You have some contingencies right now where they're already looking for ways to secure the Indian Ocean. Because Iran is looking to find ways to launch projectiles or missiles from the Indian Ocean into Israel. Israel's facing this. Mm -hmm. The northern portion of the Arab Peninsula is an issue that Israel and Saudi Arabia are working very closely together with because they're very concerned about that. Egypt is facing a, a serious problem right now. Because, as you said, the Sinai is empty, but part of the reason why the Sinai is empty is because of the water disputes that are... Ex well, th th that's a big... The Sinai is empty prominently because of Gaza, right, to the north. But there's a major water dispute that is uh, floating around that Egypt is in the middle of. You've got the issue of Somalia land and Somalia that Egypt has chimed in on, right, that has created a bigger problem, which has become a security issue for Israel for several reasons, right? We don't have to get into that. That's a Red Sea issue that get that uh, creates a problem. You have the Libya front, which is absolutely a concern for Israel yeah. because if, if, if Russia ends up becoming the prominent force in Libya, which they already are, but if, if Russia wins the civil war in Libya, then Israel might fare a little bit better in the sense that there is a semi-diplomatic relationship that exists between Israel right now and Russia. But you have that problem. You've got the... Uh, uh, so we don't even have to get into the Tripoli discussion or the Benghazi one for that matter, hmm. right? You also have a serious problem in the northern Mediterranean at the southern, uh, the southern coast of Turkey, especially with Erdogan, who's in that... If you go look at... In Turkey, if you go look at that north... Uh, northeast section of the Mediterranean where Erdogan is just 
pumping tons of holes into the ground in the ocean trying to look for oil and the dispute right now that exists between Beirut claiming that they own part of the land that Israel has the right to in the oil, the one that... Uh, part of the oil, yeah. Yeah, the one that, of course, uh, um, uh, the previous prime minister got involved with and just made a complete error out of. And also the, the, for, the, the, the uh, foreign minister, too. He made a huge mistake in that. So you have that front that they have to deal with. You have a problem that potentially is rising in Cyprus. There's a major problem they could be facing with Morocco because of the issue with Western Sahara and, and Israel's recent declaration and saying they're supporting Morocco's position with respect to how they view oh, Western that's Sahara. Be an interesting. Yeah, because that creates a problem with so the here, neighboring here Tunisia. Go. James, the, the, whole, the whole world is becoming... Isn't it? I'm just, I, I, and people think I'm over-exaggerating. All and of then, these things are then, real issues. And then Newsom says that, you know, my prime minister is... is doubling down on stupid. Can I, can, can I also tell you this too? I would bet my bottom, I would bet my whole life and everything that I have in my life that Gavin Newsom couldn't even point out half of the geography of the places that me and you are talking about right now. Okay, but, okay, so, but let's, let's tie it down together. And maybe, I mean, do we want to get into the American uh, Air, Air Force man? Oh, we're not going to, we're barely going to have the time, but, and, but we, I will talk about this. Uh, I'll, I'll just say this right now. Here's a title. U.S. Air Force member who set himself on fire at Israeli embassy in shocking scene while yelling free Palestine is identified. He died, by the way. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Why is Palestine becoming the rallying cry for all of the downtrodden and the mistreated, all the victims of the world? I think it's becoming the rallying cry for the mentally ill. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. You, you, there, there has to be a part of you that is broken if you cannot see the basic issues involved in this. And one of the things that I, I was kind of kind of freaking out, I think it was trigonometry said something about this, okay? The world sometimes needs these victims to, to, to raise up on, on, a, on a pedestal. They need a, a uh, uh, how do you say, a serpent on, on a rod. They need a, they need a statue that they can kind of gather around. They need, what's the name, a burning man, okay, yep. that they can kind of dance around in, in their frenzy. And uh, one of the things that somebody brought up is the whole Che Guevara, for instance. Oh, I yeah. don't know if you know, Che Guevara was a terrible person. I know. He was know, a terrible bro. person for, for know. as a whole. He was anti-gay in the extreme. How come he is being used? Shirts sure, and 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 because they don't know Habibi. They no, don't but know. But they need an idol. They yep. need an idol to yep. raise. And here's the thing: the Palestinian cause, I think, has become a new idol for the self-marginalized, self-victimized, self-people who say, oh, we are the victims of the world and we need to support something that we believe is a victim. It doesn't matter if it's I a mean, victim or not. I don't, I, our audience knows this because we have the, some of the best educated audience out there, right? But it, the Palestinians are the only ones that have permanent refugee status. Nobody else has permanent refugee status. They do. So, so, an American soldier decides, serviceman, decides to make this the point of his life or the, the issue of his death. And, and okay, he's the one who did it, but there's a lot of people back there that are supporting this. Well, he's mental, he was mentally ill. Yeah. And that's a problem. By the way, we there's there's another one I just now heard, somebody in California who's, what, a documentary maker? He's, he decided not to take his HIV medication in, uh, in the name of Palestine. I mean, okay, you're going to die and uh, you're not going to, the only statement that you're going to make is that you're mentally ill. But it's become the rallying point. It's become the, 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 the glue that holds together these people. And maybe this is something that we need to say publicly and we're going to this. There is a war between evil and good in the world. That's right. Okay. Evil is making its images. It's making its statues that people will rally around. The evil has made Palestine and, and the Palestinians and, and those animals in Gaza that actually perpetrated this, this horrific attack. Yeah, they're demons. They're turning them into the images, into the statues, into the idols of the war against truth and, right. and goodliness. We need people who do take God's 
goodliness seriously to look at these idols and re-see them and understand the, the, the idols that they are. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, let's do this because we, we are running out of time. Um, let's go over to Locals and let's mm. watch that full BB interview together. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. That'll be a good thing. Um, uh, Salt and Light, by the way, thank you for your super chat. Um, I am going to take this uh, Locals... Uh, link for those of you guys that are interested. By the way, it's not too late if you want to jump in. We do have a discount. It is New Year 24 if you want to jump in on that and support uh, me and my family. By the way, this is interesting. Um, the Locals platform, eventually we are going to switch over to our own uh, app. Mm. At that point, we're going to do the same thing for David. Um, as a matter of fact, I uh, personally right now am doing all the groundwork for that, which I'm uh, pretty excited about. So you'll be able to directly support David and his family, uh, which is a great thing on top of helping with Gihon Springs, uh, which is a, a, all to be said. You know, one of these days, you remember how Karen kind of like just told everybody you were, you know, you were the guy overseeing. I'm the Joshua. Yeah, yeah, you're the Joshua. Okay. Um, we're going to have Karen on the show soon. Okay. We're gonna do that. That's we're gonna, gonna we're gonna do that sooner than later. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna go for a little roller coaster ride on that one because um, if 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 anybody knows me and loves me and knows what I'm all about, they're gonna love every moment of Karen because we're gonna spend some time talking about Jeff and uh, it's just gonna be a really great show, and I'm and I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be a really really good show. So we'll do that sooner than later. As a matter of fact, what we may do is we may record it and play it as live just because of the nature of what we'll go over. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Okay. So we'll do that. Maybe you and her and Christy. And ah, that'll it'll, be it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll have a great time. It'll be that, a long that would it'll, it'll be a be long recording and it'll just be a lot of fun and we'll we'll play it and I think a ton of people will watch it and will really enjoy it and it'll be it'll be really good. So, okay. okay, so we're going to go over to Locals right now. Um, again, New Year 24 is the code if you want to support us on that. Um, we would love to have that. You get a, an extra month. So basically, for what you would pay for nine months, you get 12, which is cool. So it's a good deal. So, yeah. um, all right, with that, let's pray. And then literally within about three minutes, we'll jump over um on locals and uh we'll get started okay father in heaven we just thank you lord for this time thank you for your faithfulness and goodness and lord we just thank you for my little brother joseph mm -hmm. i pray god that you would bless him immensely lord we love him so much and uh, just help him to really be blessed on this very special day lord we pray for the nation of israel we pray for the peace of jerusalem lord we just thank you for all that you've done in our lives thank you for everything that you've given us thank you for david and uh, the work that you've put in front of him, it's a great work. And I'm excited to see, Lord, what you're going to continue to do. So, Lord, we just love you. We thank you. We pray that you would just go before us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, we love you. We will see you in just a few minutes on Locals where we'll go over the interview. God bless you.